We're back here with John. He's gonna do some grafting on persimmon rootstocks. Little, little persimmon. ones, real skinny ones. See that so one. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these coming up. Okay. See, even that, graft that down there. And even even if this is bigger, you can graft it up here. Just line up, line up okay. the cambium on one side. So how could someone, if they only had fat, you know, scion wood, how could they graft a fat piece to a small one? Uh, you could even if it's as you know thick as this or thick as a pencil just line it up on one side and that's all that matters even if I have some of the thick ones that we took yeah okay yeah and, and you can you know you can look on there and see if you can find some skinnier ones like I just did for the side Joe I tried to find twigs but um, but you can get away with the big fat scion wood as yeah. long as you pick one side yeah okay and and the this is our native uh, you know Virginia Virginiana persimmon it's uh, <clears throat> it outgrows it outgrows the Asian grafted to it so it makes like a club foot okay or it's, sometimes they call that the chair conformation so the it'll be twice the diameter so it might start out as half the diameter now but very quickly in a year well, or two it, it'll be bigger does, so does it, this one actually if you were to just grow it by itself would it still make a fruit yeah they taste that they taste good all the Wild persimmons I have taste good. They're small. The native, as far as I know, the Native American persimmons that are selected for fruit quality are from the population that's north of the Ohio River. And those have 90 chromosomes, like the Asian persimmon. And so they are sexually compatible. So the hybrids among them are from the north of the Ohio River one. These south of the Ohio River, these southern American persimmons are 60 chromosome. I don't think they're sexually compatible with the ones north of the Ohio River and they also make a much smaller fruit. Having those extra chromosomes you know makes a bigger fruit and they got bigger leaves and the leaves are a different shape and I don't think they should be called the same species. I'm gonna go ahead and do just to be crazy I'm gonna see if I can do a very tiny um, whip and tongue. Okay. So with the whip and tongue I'm gonna slice all the way through it. And then I kind of put my finger back here to reinforce the top of the whip and tongue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then I always like to start my tongue from the top of what I'm cutting. Rock it so you can control the depth of cut and not cut the finger, which I still occasionally do. But I, mm -hmm. Let's not let's don't do that. Let's not do that. So that's the now tongue. You're making a a if, fit for if, it. If you do this graft without the tongue, it's called a splice graft. Okay. And Brandy down at Just Fruits, she always liked to do a splice. The tongue helps you to place, you and know. Hold it in place. To hold it in place. There we go. So that's the same distance. Now, if I cut at the top here, mm -hmm. and I got the top of the scion going down. So cut at the top again. Whoops. And go into it. Now, when these two meet, see on the side, it'll, it'll lock in and they'll be touching each Point. other. So, yeah, my friend Scott likes this graft. He finds that aesthetically appealing. It does look better. Does it? <laughs> I so that's. So it's, I, it, I know it's a little bit harder. You have to have a really good hand and more practice. If you get it, it's really, it's actually pretty easy to do if you practice it. Um, practice you, makes perfect. You get good at it. They say it's a, people with more experience than me say it's an easy graph to do. It's just something it, that you do, if you do it a lot, you'll get the hang of it. I've, I've never done a whip and tongue on something so small before. So the first time. Yeah, I, usually I'll, good. I'll do it on three eighths or half inch size. You should be proud of yourself. Yeah. You're on camera, you're on YouTube. <laughs> John's the man. You see, a lot of people need to know about using the rubber band. It helps keep it secure when you wrap the paraffin around it. I got these at Walmart. I like these multi-packs because you get different sizes of rubber bands. So for tiny things, I like the really small ones. And mm -hmm. for, you know, big ones. So. Well, you have two different choices. Yeah, yeah I, I <clears> bought <throat> budding rubbers. I actually like the rubber bands better than the, the, budding, the ones. budding rubbers. I've seen them there. A little different. Yeah. The parafilm, 
will protect the rubber band from the sun, especially when you're doing dormant grafts that have to stick, stay out for a while. Um, the rubber band degrades in the sun before the graft takes, but the parafilm seems to block enough light to keep the rubber band in the moisture doing its job. Yeah, and it keeps the moisture in and it'll being semi-permeable, allows it to exchange gases so the wound can heal quicker. I just love parafilm. It, it is great. It increased. I've actually had better success now before I was using just plastic. You know, the, the little pieces of plastic. Yeah, I hate the plastic. It, and you have to take it off and I had no luck. Yeah, I, I really like the uh, parafilm. Let's do something wild and try a really tiny one. I mean, the, the pup's name. That, that's Maggie. Maggie. Maggie, yeah, she's. Maggie's having a blast. She's boss. On these really tiny ones, um, I've actually grafted peaches and plums, you know, about that diameter, maybe even a little smaller. Wow. Um, where was I cutting? I lost my cut. There it is. The, uh, I, I just do a, a simple cleft. I don't, I, it's so small, I can't do the side, side cleft or side wedge. Mm -hmm. So I just do a simple split down the middle. Try not to touch the the cut part, the cuts, the open wound. You don't want to get any bacteria, bacteria or fungal spores or any kind of nasty. There we go. So that's a pretty curved cut I made on this little thing, but um, the wood's very flexible because it's so tiny. Mm -hmm. So I actually think that's got, because it, that little, this little tiny seedling is actively growing like that. Should I take. think, I think that's going to take, I'd be surprised if it doesn't get, this is the only time of year, like I said, that I get good, good graft percentages. Let's see. Let's see right there. And you got, really got to have these tiny rubber bands for that. Mm-hmm. This uh, pot of persimmons I had at my house here in Tallahassee, where it's warmer, and here we are in February, and we're they're already... breaking dormancy and growing. It's crazy. Where, as you... in the past, in our historical climate, I didn't see persimmons waking up at all till April, and then it they... started happening in March, and now it's in February. It's a big change happening. Yeah, especially here. You'd have to be in denial not to see it. I don't know. You gotta be outside a lot. If you pay attention to the to plants and yeah, you, you see it. That's the smallest one I've seen. Oh, yeah. That's that, pretty cool. That's that the guy you were talking Adam, about, yeah. Adam. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm gonna have to watch. I haven't seen the video. I'll watch. He's got it. a new one. I'm gonna have to send it to you. Yeah, I'd, I'd Pete, like uh, Pete Green Dreams. He filmed him again. I'd like to. Uh, I, none of my Jabota copies are old enough to really bear, mm -hmm. but they're close. You have one a lot bigger than the one. Yeah, the biggest one at my house is about, mm, it's definitely six feet by now. So it's, it's getting close. Probably this year or next year. Or probably next year. Pro I'd say it's probably going to be a couple years before I get fruit. I'd say it's going to be about eight feet tall when it makes fruit. Have you thought about trying to grab some of them? I actually did because I know it's getting more mature, but... So that's a veneer. I don't know if you can see it, but that's a veneer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just let me get a rubber band and tie it. A little bit hard wrestling all these um, other twigs in there. Yeah, it is. So one of the things I like to do when I'm doing a graph like this. Let's actually put the rubber band on there first. Mm -hmm. So that's ready to go. So now it's ready to wrap, up, wrap over and hold it. That's a good idea. Yeah, it'll make it easier on you. And then you can kind of hold it and then wrap around. 
and then you can take your finger over and hold it. Hold in place. So that way you can place it in the proper position and you're not wrestling. And it looks like you've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, great. There, there's probably all kinds of, you know, different finger work techniques you can do, but that's, yeah. that's the way I do it. I like it. And then now I'm going to go back down and wrap right there. See, I had to push it down. Uh -huh. Now that little lip at the bottom is in contact with the little wedge at the bottom of the veneer sign. So, That's a good that you pointed that out. Yeah. So we can just reposition it a little bit, and then I'll Lay it tuck it under. Come around here, so you can see it. Perfect. There we go. Now because that's actively, and you can leave this actively growing too. Until that pushes out. And then that'll, uh, most likely that will grow together. I think, so that's a veneer. I did one of these on the, on the mango. I'm hoping it still takes, it's still green. A veneer? It's pushing out a little bud. I'm not sure if it's a flower cluster or a, a, a leaf. It's a flower busted off. Probably a flower if I'm trying to push it out. It is busted off, yeah. Okay. The um, as long as there's a vegetative bud, there's not. So I don't know what's going to happen. It's just uh, like 50 50. Let's find out. <laughs> it's doing something, so it's only one bud. Well, the, I, the I grafted three of them. The, if, if there's a flower bud, there's probably a little leaf bud right there beside That'd it. Be you perfect. might not see it. I hope so. Because hers, I thought they were the like were pushing out buds. So I like the you know the cleft and the side wedge or side cleft for for doing these persimmons. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just did the veneer and the flipping tongue to show you. That's perfect, all the different ones. I, I usually do let them get bigger, usually around the pencil size before I graft them. But um, sometimes, sometimes I'll graft them when they're an eighth inch like that. You know, if, if I got the twigs, it's kind of hard not to graft it. Right. Thank you so much, John, for showing us how to graft these uh, persimmon root stocks. You are welcome. Catch you later.